Hello everyone, Nigat here, and I have another build order guide that I'm very excited to show you. This is a follow-up on the 8 House Raider build that I uh, put up on my YouTube channel recently. Um, so this just shows you one of the options that you can go for uh, with a 8 House Raider opening, and then you can pair it with a pretty aggressive um, follow-up as well. And this, this build order actually came out of a kind of um, a brainstorm about how to play defensively and aggressively at the same time, how to kind of negotiate all the options or all the game states that are coming at you, and kind of just being in a place where you can be in the driver's seat and have the necessary answers for particular situations. So uh, if we go into the build order, you'll notice that we built one worker, then one house, and then we started up that worker. We allow our castle to kind of sit idle for a couple moments while that uh, that house is underway. Ultimately, this this idle time probably costs us about five to ten gold in total. Um, that 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 means from like the idle time up to like the two minute mark, we probably sacrifice uh, ten gold of not having worker mining um, so that we can get this this raider onto the map um about about eight seconds faster maybe even maybe even more than eight seconds faster um, i also find that this build order uses the gold very efficiently so you'll notice right at 50 gold i build this worker right at 125 gold i built this and then you'll also see that right at 350 gold we'll we'll build our castle so uh you've pretty much seen if you've seen the 8 house exp uh, expand build order that I did, it's the exact same footage. I'm actually using the exact same um, uh, game footage that, that I did for that video, but uh, to show this um, this build order. So the goal of this build, or build order is to get that early raider and then to pair it with aggressive raider drops. So this is a build order that used to exist um, a lot more popularly like th this used to be the go-to um, at least for myself for a very long time um, but I found it to be really fragile and thus I kind of went away from this build order but as my skill uh, and my control over my raiders has increased I definitely feel more comfortable with playing this kind of uh, build order nowadays uh, so we go for that first raider um, you have the option to go for a second raider here if you want to. It turns this into a more aggressive uh, two racks raider build or, or two raider uh, expand build. Um, we just call that the two raider build. Two racks is when you get two barracks at the beginning of the game. Uh, and then we go for the expand. So I'm just going for one raider and then I'm expanding. I'm using this very early raider to scout around the map. To basically see if my opponent has anything going on. In this case, I'm just playing against a guest that I had idle just so I could focus only on the build order. And then after the castle is put down, the first thing I get is this second raider at 150 gold, or 110 gold rather. And then I get another worker at 50 gold and I start up my worker production. So now that we've done our worker cuts in the beginning of the game, my goal is to basically get ahead economically, um, to get as far ahead as possible, and then to move on from there. One thing I will note about this build order is you wanna get as much information as possible with this first raider, whether it be to scout, whether it be to uh, see what's going on. Oh, and then here comes the worker transfer, okay. So once you start building, or once you have a, enough gold to start putting uh, your third raider into production, that's when you want to start transferring your workers over to your second base. I transfer five workers. That way I can have a total of six workers mining each base, and that, that is, um, that's very efficient. You want to have um, lower counts of workers evenly distributed at... Uh, each of your base, probably the maximum return on investment you get from workers is around 10 per gold mine. So that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm aiming for. And then I'm just constantly producing 
uh, workers and raiders. You'll notice uh, we have one, two, three raiders on the map with the fourth being produced, workers constantly in production. Once we hit 140 gold, I go ahead and pull a worker and we're gonna build an advanced workshop. The advanced workshop is gonna let us get those airships so that we can go for some raider drops. It also is keeping us safe from things like, um, like hidden fortresses that are being built so that your opponent can go for dragon layers. So this is like a safety uh, advanced workshop and an aggressive advanced workshop all at the same time. The, the cool thing about this little sequence of the build order is that you become so close to being supply blocked. You'll notice that workers are being produced. We have another raider, like so close to not being able to produce, but because of the, the timing of the build order, uh, you're able to just always be producing out of all of your uh, buildings and then right when we hit the 100 gold mark we have to build a house if we don't build this house right at 100 we are going to be supply blocked later on uh, for the amount of time that this house doesn't finish for or doesn't start for so this house notice we're, we're at 28 of 30 this house is basically timed with this worker finishing and both of them are going to finish at the exact same time which will allow us to build that other worker while this is all going on, you should have three raiders harassing your opponent. Three raiders is a big deal. Um, it, it takes a lot of resources, whether it be mental resources or gold resources, to kind of defend against that. Uh, and then at the same time, you're getting more raiders and you're getting this drop. I will say, definitely, definitely you need a scout with, with this build order. You need to see if your opponent has anything in his main base that you need to be worried about. Uh, but the majority or, th or the main thing you need to scout for, absolutely need to, is to see if your opponent went for a second barracks uh, before going for their third base. If they went for a second barracks, you also have to get a second barracks and then try to just keep up the raider pressure. All right, here are, come our workers. We built those two workers and then we build our airship. So uh, our airship should be around uh, 4 minutes 50 seconds. With constant worker production coming up, coming along, we didn't get supply blocked, and now I believe now, no, wait, 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 yeah, now we build another house. Uh, that house was a little late. You definitely want to build that at 100, similar to the other house that we were going for. Uh, we build that house, then we build another raider, queue up two more workers, and then with this drop, we're gonna use our raider pressure and then the pressure of this drop to secure our third base. And we'll see that very shortly. Uh, I think I queue up the two workers now. Yeah, one worker and then a second worker. And then you'll notice basically right when this airship pops, we'll start having enough gold to start sending our worker over to the other side uh, of the third base here. And then our airship here is gonna be ready to pick up our raiders and we'll be able to do a drop on our opponent. Basically, once you get your third base down, you can essentially follow up with however uh, you need to follow up. The airship lets you scout everything that's going on in the main base. The raider drop lets you deal with any defenses that might be there. It allows you to get a lot of worker kills. And then likewise, you can follow this up with any kind of play, whether you want to transition into additional barracks, uh, or additional airships or workshops or, or whatever you might want to do. Uh, in this replay, I decided to continue building um, building out of my uh, castles and getting raiders, constant raider production, and then I followed up with additional uh, barracks. So that's how this uh, build goes. It allows you to be safe against dragons, against gyrocraft, as we're going for that early pressure. Uh, which keeps us safe from like early all-ins, that kind of stuff. It lets us scout. The early advanced air, uh, workshop is our tech, which gives us additional pressure to be able to harass our main opponent. And then we follow it up with additional barracks. And I'll, I'll show you here. Uh, as my third base is getting saturated, I have a second drop that's on its way, and then I just immediately start putting on additional barracks. But up to you, once you get your third base down, it, you're, you're essentially um, on your own 
uh, with what you can do from from that point on. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, very, very strong, um, or this is a hard build order actually. You have to be a strong player in order to do this well. Uh, to get as much pressure and damage as you possibly can in the early game and then follow it up with those drops. But if you're able to pull it off, if you're able to basically snowball your raiders into this harassment followed up with this drop pressure, then you'll be in a really solid position uh, being able to expand safely uh, and then transition from that point on. And uh, these raiders are basically capable of ending the game on their own. In fact, most of the time, just getting one barracks producing raiders, constant raider production, um, is enough for you to just securely get your third base without your opponent being able to do much about it. The advanced workshop lets you put additional pressure on them, forcing them to stay home, forcing them to defend their main base, which allows you to get way ahead and continue to build up your economy and build up your production. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I, I really like experimenting with this build. Again, safety and pressure all in the same kind of build and then even following it up with economy just have to be worried or at least aware of that second barracks once you see that second barracks you have to get a second barracks of your own if you do not you're likely to lose um and uh yeah hope you guys enjoyed <laughs>